Hey guys, we're back. Uh, now, I'm doing a video today, you've probably seen the title of the video, but I'm going to be doing a tier maker of the One Piece characters. Um, and in my opinion, this, one of the strongest points about this show is the characters. So uh, if you're new to the channel and you've just discovered this, um, I am currently watching through One Piece for the first time. Uh, and I have just finished the East Blue, basically. I'm currently watching the filler in between Logtown and the Grand Line. So I'm almost finished that. So I've met every character on this tier list. Uh, it's basically covering everybody in the East Blue we've met so far. I wanted to do uh, this and rank the characters, give my thoughts on them. Uh, just a little thing here, just before I can record the next video into episode 61, where we'll be heading into the Grand Line. Now, uh, this is, I have a thing about these kind of tier lists where I don't believe that S tiers should be thrown out there willy-nilly. I think it's something that has to be re really earned. So this is probably going to cause some arguments <laughs> because I don't, there'll be a couple of characters you're probably expecting to be S tier, but I'll give my reasons as to why they're not quite there yet. Because um, keep in mind, you guys, when you're, watching this uh like i said if you've just discovered the channel you're probably caught up with one piece and you'll be looking at some of these opinions going what what's he thinking here but remember i'm just at this point so bear with me and i will get like i said i will give explanations as to why i've chosen what i've chosen uh yeah so let's just jump in and i'm thinking maybe like the next time if i do a video like this i'd like to maybe if i've got the capacity to do it in like a stream format I'd like to chat with you guys and we can argue about these, you know, horrible takes I'm about to have here on these characters. Uh, yeah, so let's just jump right in. We've seen, here we go, we've got the full cast of characters here. And I'm going to just, the S tier, down the garbage tier. I don't anticipate there's going to be a lot of people in the garbage tier because, like I said, this show, the characters are so strong. Even the bad characters are somewhat redeemable like there's like there's some good points to them so yeah s tier and garbage tier are going to be light i'll warn you that just now and then and as i go through as well i will um kind of put them in order like maybe the s and the a i'll put them in order of my favorite and i'm ranking them based on how i feel about them as characters not my per preference of my favorite characters uh, that will play a bit of a factor into it, but I'm kind of giving it as a whole, like how are they as a character to the story? How is their story arc? How is their personality? You know, everything associated with them, their potential, all of that kind of stuff. Like how were like, the villains, how were they as villains? Uh, you know, that crewmates, whatever. It's going to be controversial probably, but hey-ho, that's, that's the way these things go. It's about discussion, invoking discussion with you guys. Uh, and... Let's just jump straight in. Right, Kobe. Ah, uh, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. Now, Kobe, I like Kobe, but it, it can be annoying, can't he? He is a bit whiny at the start. Uh, I do like the fact that, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put him in B. B tier, Kobe. I, I like the fact that when we were doing the bounties, we went back to him and he, he's, he, he super looks up to Luffy. That's what I like about him. That's my redeeming quality for him is how much he respects Luffy. So, yeah, I like when we went back to him in the Marine base and he was mopping up and like excited seeing the poster of Luffy. So I'll put him there. Uh, oh, God. Hell no, Paul. Yeah, Hell no, Paul. I've got, a kinda, like, I've got my notes here. Of some of these characters' names have just kind of gone. But, yeah, Helmepo, right. Captain Morgan's son. Ah. Uh, D. D tier for Helmepo. Uh, I, I, I was thinking between D and C because he does, he is good for what he does. He is a, you know, a dick, basically. He has a, he plays the role well, you know, the way he treats people in that uh, town be try to get away with his the privilege of who his dad is. It is the entitled son. They do do it well, but other than that, you know, just a you know, not much else to him. Um oh this guy uh for the from the bar uh in Logtown, yeah, brief interaction we had with him, you know, he was okay. I like the scene I like the scene where he saw Gold Roger 
and Luffy. I thought that was awesome. Uh, I'll put him in C. Yeah. Oh, God. Like the bandit from like the first episode. Uh, uh, D tier for this guy. You know, he was there. He was there to drive the story, and he did his. He did his part well. You know, what else can you say? Okay, there we go. So, I know I said that it would be very hard for characters to break into it, but there is absolutely no question. Zoro S tier. That is just. But if you've uh, watched any of the videos of me watching through this series, you'll know time and time again how much I've expressed my love for this character. You know, right from the get-go. He's just he's one of those characters that as soon as he appeared on the screen, I thought, oh, God, this is going to be my favourite character. You know, he's just, he's so good. The the moments he's had, his relationship with Luffy, uh, you know, those two bouncing off each other, he's, he's just so good. I can't speak about him well enough. You know, the episode with Mihawk, that great episode with Mihawk, he gets absolutely decimated, like destroyed, humiliated in that fight. And at the end of the episode, I'm sitting there going, God, I love Zoro. <laughs> and that's the, that's the strength of the writing of this show. Uh, Ichiro Oda, his writing, is to make me love this character, even though he's being humiliated on screen, like decimated by this much stronger character. And I came out loving Zoro even more. And that's just, it's so good. And that's why the characters are so good in this show. The development is insane. And yeah, Z without question, Zoro's up there for me. Um, who have we got? Oh, the mayor uh, from the town Buggy was in, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's okay. Um, I'll give him C tier. Like, I'd, I've, you know... He had a little, he had his little moments. He kind of went and stood up to buggy for the village and stuff. Not much else to it. Like, I'm not going to go into depth with these kind of characters. You know, I'll give a brief explanation as to where, why I'm putting them there. I'll, I'll give more of an explanation for the major uh, characters, uh, and then we'll kind of go in depth at the end as to why I'm putting them above people or whatever it may be. Um, Kuina, uh, I like Kuina. Um, in terms of a Zoro story, but uh, I mean, we don't get much of her, and her death was weird. You know, I still don't know. I don't want to kind of hang me because I chuck a crazy prediction out there, <laughs> but it seemed weird. Her death seems very strange, guys. I think there's still something maybe going on there. Uh, I'll put her in C just now. Uh, yeah. Oh, our dad. See, this guy's... I thought it was a bit weird how calm he was after she died, when, she, when he was talking to Zoro. But then again, I can't really judge it. You know, like, I'm not going to get into that because I'm the, I'm the kind of same. I, I, I kind of do that at funerals. I, I just kind of go emotionless, don't cry and stuff, and then it all kind of hits me after the fact. So I, got, I love it. I'm getting, like, really deep into this for this character. Oh... Uh, yeah, I'll give him D, because I, I I really, I was going to maybe see, no, I'll put him in D, because there's not much to him, really. I like, I like him, like, he's just, he's there, you know, he's, he's there for his purpose, oh, God, right, Gaimon, uh, you know what, I'll give him C, I think he's funny, uh, I do think he's a funny character, you know, the episode with Buggy, I thought was funny, <laughs> where they have a duel, <laughs> when Buggy doesn't have his body, yeah, oh, shoo shoo. Uh oh god, I actually I think I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna put him in B. <laughs> no, no, you know what? I'm gonna put him in C. Because his bark is weird. He's got a very strange bark. I don't you know what? I'd love to actually hear his bark in the dub and see what they've done with that. Because that was that was a strange choice they went with to give him uh that. Uh actually and Morgan mm, Yeah, he's a C character. See, the thing is, with these characters, is a lot of the kind of villains, for me, I feel like the villains just keep getting better and better in One Piece, so these would have been probably higher until, like, the next person came, and then they've kind of moved down. Um, and I'm looking forward to when I progress in the series and meet other people kind of thinking back and going, right, where would I probably put Morgan now? Because I'm guessing kind of later on when I meet better villains in the series, 
he'll probably go down to a D tier. Uh, but as of now, I'll put him in C because he is, you know, just a horrible person. Uh, oh, God. Right, okay. Monkey D. Luffy. Let's just get him straight up there. Uh, guys, there's no question in my mind that this guy's an S tier. Uh, I have watched, in terms of shonen uh, anime or manga, because I kind of jump between the two, uh, I've seen all of Naruto, all of Dragon Ball, all of Bleach, um, there's been some others, uh, you know, through the years, like, you know, these are just, those are just the major ones, and through watching basically 60 episodes of this show, I can safely say that Monkey D. Luffy is my favourite protagonist in Shonen, uh, without question for me. At the start of the show, it reminded me of Goku, like OG Goku when he was a kid. And I thought, oh yeah, he's giving me Goku vibes. And then maybe 10 episodes later, I was like, nah, this guy's like, this is just a different, a different character altogether. He's just so good. I love him so much. Him and Zoro for me are just, I kind of jump between the two of them of who's my favourite character. And it changes every couple of episodes because Luffy's just, he's so good. He's, he's one, the reason I kind of compare them to Goku is he has that sense of, you know, he's, he's a bit of an idiot at times, uh, and you're like, but Goku's at times annoyed me, whereas Luffy's, I find hilarious, because it's it's done so well in terms of the character, in terms of, you know, he's, he's hilarious one minute, but then when it's time to get serious, he gets serious, he's a badass, you know, when he's protecting his friends, or when he's got to switch it on, fantastic, so many good moments, such a great character. Uh, Usopp's uh, pirate, those little pirate buddies. Um, you know what? I'm going to put them in B. I actually really enjoyed them. I thought they were funny. Uh, yeah, good little characters. That's all. You know, all of that carrying on Usopp's legacy. And the man himself, Usopp, right, okay. Usopp's A. I'm going to put him in A. Usopp for me is a character in the crew and in One Piece in general, actually, with the most room for growth, you know, just even, like, I'd say before Arlong Park, I would have probably put him in B, uh, but he's had so many good moments, uh, his moment in Arlong Park put him up for me, where, uh, his fight against Chu, where he kind of, you know, is like, right, okay, I can't do this anymore, no more lies, you know, I need to stand up, my friend's in danger here, I need to do this, I need to stop telling these stories and thinking of excuses, and, you know, he is just like, He's this guy, I mean, you look at the two guys that are in S tier, they are monsters, their strength is off the charts, you know, and this is just basically a normal guy that's on this ship, and he's basically, like, I don't want to sound, I don't want to insult Usopp, but I can see him as Yamcha done right, you know, he's the normal guy, along with these guys that have got these crazy powers, but he is done properly in terms of he belongs on that in that crew, he belongs on that ship, he brings something to the crew, uh, and he's hilarious, you know, so, yeah, and I, I, I think that, I have no doubt that at some point, he's probably going to jump up to S tier, because, but remember, I'm only in uh, East Blue as of now, so you guys have seen a lot more than me, and you guys are probably going to say, like, any member of the crew that I put below S tier, I'm probably going to get, what? But, I'm going to see where we go with Usopp, uh, Mary, um, I'll put Mary in D tier, he probably would have made C, but you know, he shot us up, and he kind of, like, I know he redeemed himself at the end, and we got the ship and stuff, and it's kind of modelled after him, but, yeah, he, he was a bit distrusting of the man, so, he goes there, um, Kuro, oh, I actually quite, oh, he, I thought, you know what, I'm going to put Kuro in B, I'm going to put him in B. I thought he was actually a good villain. He made me despise him. Um, he'd done his job. You know, that's the villain's job is to make you hate them. And he did that. He did that. And he did it well. So, yeah, he gets a B tier. Uh, you know, I liked his uh, knives as well. He had on his claws. Uh, Kaya, Kaya, Kaya. Where are we going to put you, Kaya? Oh, God. 
I think I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll put Kaya and C. Kaya, I like Kaya. Um, but you know, again, the same kind of distrustful of her sop and then, but she redeemed herself. You know, um, showed up. You know, being ill, facing, showing up to face. Uh, Kuro, but again, I need, I need more. I need more of her character. You know, she just kind of. I love the fact that she is. We went back and saw her. She's training to become a doctor. She's cheering on Usopp. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Belmere. This is one. S tier. I'm putting Belmere on S tier. Uh, I... The thing for me is with these characters, and I'm probably going to get a lot of, you know, stick for some of the characters coming up because I'm probably going to put them below uh, and below tiers just because of... I've not had much screen time with them and I think that there's more to come from them. And in future videos, they'll probably move up. With Belmere, her story's complete. You know, we're only with her for a couple of episodes, but those couple of episodes were so impactful. Her story was just crazy. It was so good, so nicely wrapped up, you know. Uh, as much as, like, there's some characters in here from Arlong's arc, uh, Arlong Park arc, that... I'm not going to make S tier, but the arc is S tier. It all fits together so well, and she's a big part of it. Her story, you know, the influence that she had on some of these characters coming up, Nami, you know, again, Nojiko, insane. Her, the flashback of her, like, and I think, you know, her design, I love her hairstyle is so unique for this. I've never seen it. I don't think I've seen that in anime before, even though I've seen some crazy hairstyles. I love it. I love the fact that I think she's like before Tashigi came along, she was like the first female marine we saw. Uh, yeah, just I didn't expect this character to hit me so hard, and it did. It just it got me, and the fact that I've put her up there with Luffy and Zoro just kind of must tell you how much I rate this character. So well written, one of the best written characters I've seen. Uh, just for a short, like, little arc of a couple of episodes. She's a, she's a flashback character, basically. She's she's dead before we get to the village. And I'm putting her in S tier because her story's complete. It's a fantastic story. She has a fantastic character. So good. A badass to the end, you know, in terms of her going up against Arlong and his crew and then her declaration, you know, in front of the kids and stuff. Just so good, guys. Uh... Yeah, I'm putting her there. I won't hear anything about it. Right, you guys can argue if you want. That's the way it is. Uh, Gen, I'm at. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Gen in A tier because I actually really like Gen. I thought Gen was really good. Uh, in fact, you know what? No, I'm gonna put him in B tier. B tier. Yeah, I really like Gen. Uh, he's basically uh, Nami's kind of dad at this point. Uh, you know, I, I thought his story was really good, you know, the bravery and the fact, the reveal, when he revealed that he had known about Nami's struggle the whole time and was kind of holding it back and kind of trying to keep the village together because she was going through all this. It's great. Like I said, you know, the arc is just fantastic. I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, oh, God, Zef. Zef's A. Zeph's A and like uh, uh, there's when I first watched uh, Barati, I would probably instinctively just put him in S tier because he's just he's, he's really good, you know. He's such a good character. Uh, as like he's one of those kind of mentor characters, you know. And he's basically he's basically Sanji's dad, you know. That is what he is, uh, you know. Because like it's it's that, you know. <sighs> The people in the show is... The, I think the only person who has actual parents is Usopp. And we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to his dad. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I think he, that's the only person in the Straw Hats that we, we've seen their actual parents. Because the rest of them have, like, any surrogate uh, parents or, like, uh, mentors that they look up to. In that sense, Luffy's got Shanks, Zoro is the dojo uh, master that he went to, but I didn't see his parents either showed up at the dojo. Zef for Sanji and Belmia for Nami. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's he's probably the, one of the best. He's just, he's, 
like the the scene with uh, him. Obviously, I had been told about it, a uh, and and I went and read it in the manga as well about him eating his own leg to save Sanji. And in the show, they do him chopping it off, but that you know that alone, that sacrifice alone is enough to kind of get you up there in the rankings. Fantastic. Oh God, Yozaku and Johnny. Ah, uh, I love Yozaku and Johnny. Do they make A tier though? Maybe B. Yeah, I'm going to go B. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of rearrange it in terms of my... Because they're probably top of B tier. Because I, I do really uh, like Yozaku and Johnny. I kind of love them for their kind of comedy, comedy commentary through a lot of the moments. You know, I love their kind of narrating in the walk to Arlong Park. Uh, and they were just... They were comic relief for me. I was kind of sad to see them go. But I understand, you know, the bounty hunters. Uh, right. Let's kind of pick up the pace a little bit here. Uh, Nojiko. I'm going to put Nojiko in B. Uh, do you know what? I like Nojiko. Um, I like Gen as well. Obviously, it's to the same kind of extent as Gen. I kind of, I kind of wanted more from her. Um, I love the kind of scene where she got the tattoos uh, to kind of uh, help Nami so she wouldn't feel lonely. Um, but, yeah. Just... I, not enough for A tier for me, uh, but still a good character. I thought she was, she'd done it well. Right. Nami. S tier. Um, this is a character that totally changed for me, my perception of her. Because I'll be honest with you, before our long part, she was probably going in B along with Kobe. Um... That's just how I felt at the time. I thought she was the weakest um, of the crew. Her and Usopp, I thought, not in terms of strength, I mean in terms of character. Uh, and then, because there was times where I was like, what's she, what's she going on about? You know, And when you, when you think about it, you go back to those earlier episodes and you think about the context. You think about after you see Arlong Park, it totally makes sense to you why she's acting the way she's acting, why she is doing the things that she's doing, you know. And Arlong Park just... You know, that, if, if I were to do this tier list before our long park, I'm not going to lie, uh, I'd like, I'm looking at the rest of the list, uh, probably Zoro and Luffy would be very lonely in S tier. Um, but Belmere and Nami kind of have clawed their way in there because they are just two fantastic characters, guys. That... that uh, Nami's and I, I do believe that Nami now like I, I love like the, the, you see the difference in her demeanour and you see the difference in her personality after Arlong Park because she's free she's free now and she's enjoying herself now on the ship and I, in terms of Belmere as well the fact that we've got the tangerine trees on the going merry so there's always a little part of Belmere with us on the journey that's fantastic and Nami's just uh, the, the my way of thinking about Nami from the start of Arlong Park to the finish, just totally did a 180. And it's fantastic because now... And I do believe in terms of her responsibility uh, on that ship, she is the most important person on that ship. You know, they they ain't getting to the Grand Line without Nami. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so just fantastic. You know, she's earned, she's earned, it. She's earned that S tier after what <laughs> her that backstory. Jesus. Um, oh, Paddy. Is it Paddy or Paddy? Well, anyway, like the chefs from um, Baratti. Um, yeah, I thought they were okay. They were funny. Um, I'll, I'll put them in C. Uh, I did enjoy them. I liked them. I liked the kind of tearful goodbye that's kind of depicted in the picture here as well of when they said goodbye to Sanji. Uh, so, yeah. But and speaking of speaking of Sanji, here we go. Um, now, probably controversial for people, but I'm going to put Sanji in A tier. Now, he's high A. But Sanji, for me, I love the character. The goodbye, Bratty, fantastic. The relationship with Zeph. But for me, Sanji just hasn't done enough to be S tier. And now, like I said before, I want you guys to remember where I am. You've probably seen things and you're thinking, Sanji in A tier? I know. You guys love these characters, but this is where I am right now. I know, I know for a fact that Usopp and Sanji are probably going to jump up, but as it stands, that's where I'm putting them. 
because I, I do, I think he's someone else with loads of potential. Remember, we've only just had him. Like, he just joined the crew at the end of Barate, so I've only had him for, like, one, well, two, if you, Log Town's, like, a kind of smaller arc. But he's only been there for, like, Arlon Park and uh, Log Town. So, I, you know, his backstory kind of shot him up because it was fantastic. But, yeah, I can tell. Obviously, the fact that him, Luffy and Zoro are called the Monster Trio, I know I'm going to have loads of moments where Sanji's probably going to uh, jump up there. Right. Okay, that's a lot of these. Let's rapid fire a lot of these kind of lower ones here. Um, Pearl, we've got our first garbage uh, guy, ladies and gentlemen. So, this character, he's, just, he's comic relief, right? Let's just put it there. Don't come at me. I don't want loads of uh, Pearl defenders in the comments, right? He's not a good character. Let's just put he, He's a joke character. For the, he's meant to be indestructible, and the joke is he gets a nosebleed and loses his mind, okay? That's it. Uh... Moji, D tier, uh, you know, what else can I say? Part of Buggy's crew, you know, a bit annoying. Loved it when Luffy smoked him. Uh, Kurobi, I actually quite like Kurobi. I'm going to put him in B. I think he's probably one of my, f he's probably my favourite uh, of the Arlong crew because he seems to be the smartest one. Um, obviously, Sanji just demolished him, but I. I really liked him. I thought, because he was the one that was kind of figuring out what was going on with Nami and stuff, and he was the kind of, he was, he seemed like the brains of that eh, outfit. Uh, right, Momu. <laughs> Momu was funny, actually, I'm, I'll, but I'll, I'll still put him in C tier. Um, I, I like that. I like his interaction with Luffy and Sanji, but that's all it really is to it. Uh, oof, yeah, Cabbage, you can go in there with your buddy. Eh, not really that. Great of a character, but Played his part, you know, did what I had to do. Um, yeah. So, people are probably going to be angry about some of these. The fact that I put Gaimon in C tier. <laughs> some of these people. <laughs> I don't know. This is the thing, right? See, because of where I am in this story, I have no idea if any of these characters are, like, how popular they are. Like, no. So... I'm sorry, you know, the, I you've got to kind of, like I said, put yourself in my shoes of where I am. So if some of these characters have come back or, you know, eh, become more, I've got a popularity in the One Piece community that I don't know about, I'm sorry. But this is how I feel about these characters. Uh, Buggy. Yeah, but I'll put Buggy in B. I like Buggy. Buggy's funny. He seems like the kind of Team Rocket of... Um, one Piece, he's going to keep coming after us. But, you know, he's, I, I, I find myself laughing at Buggy a lot. And, you know, that's that's always a good thing. Uh, and it looks like he's coming to the Grand Line. He obviously has a history with Shanks as well, which, you know, just adds to his credit. Um, oh, God, the Meow Band brothers. Uh, yeah, D tier for these guys. I did not really enjoy them. Uh, yeah, not much to say about them, really. They're just, you know, poor side characters. Wouldn't say not poor, but just you know, we've met so much more better characters since then. Like this man here who is going into A tier. Gein. Um I'll rearrange these in terms of my favourites. But yeah, Gein. I my opinion of Gein totally changed from the start of Baratier as I move forward. Uh, you know, just because of the kind of you know, the turmoil he went through of starving to being saved to having to go and bring Don Creek there and then you know, the emotions he felt when Don Krieg tried to take over the restaurant. And then, obviously, he he had his loyalty to him, but then his kind of feelings towards people that saved him. Just a, a really good character, guys. I really, I, I hope we see him again. I know they didn't really kind of explain about what happened, because he was poisoned. And he said, I don't know how much time I've got left and stuff. And I was like, what? But I really hope that we see Gene again because I really love the cat. I hope he goes to the Grand Line and we get to meet him there. And now he's the captain, you know, get captain over this guy, who is going in to you know put him in B tier. Uh, yeah, Don Krieg. You know, he he was, he was a good villain. Let's let's give him his credit. He made you hate him. You know, that was the point of the character. He did that well. The fight with Luffy was awesome. You know, but at the end of the day, I much prefer Gein. Gein I, I just think Gein's a better character. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, right. Full body. Um, you know what? Uh, is he a D tier? Is he a C tier? You know, he's, he's kind of... I'm going to put him in D. I, I'll put him in D. I, I thought he was, like... I don't know. He was there, like... He's basically just there for Sanji to just beat him up. <laughs> You know, I like, and no, in fact, you know what, I'm going to put him up the seat here. Because the scene where they tried to put the bug in the soup and all of that and impress the women, Sanji humiliated them. I actually, you know, I give him credit. He actually did have a lot more involvement than I thought. And he, he, like I said before, he's, he's one of these characters who plays his part. He makes you kind of want to see him getting beat up, you know. So, yeah, put him in C. Right. Shanks. Now. I feel like this is where the comments are going to probably go crazy. Uh, now, I ha love Shanks. I love Shanks. He is basically the start point of the series. He is what inspires Luffy to go on and, you know, chase this dream. He is a fantastic character. But... I'm going to put him, oh, if I can get it, I'm going to put him in A tier, right? He's not quite S tier for me as a character, yet. And I'm saying that, yet, because, again, this is East Blue. And what I want you guys to do, right? In fact, you know what? I'll say this just now. If you guys can, right? I'll, I'll hear something for you. I want you guys to go into the comments, right? And I want you to give me your S tiers from this list, right? Give me your S tiers from this list. But I want, if you can, and I know this is going back 15 years for some of you, I want you to put yourself back to when you just finished East Blue. And I want you to be honest, right? I want you to take all of your recency bias out of it, all of the arcs that you've seen since the East Blue. I want you to go back and think, hmm, when I finished East Blue and was going to the Grand Line, which of these characters did I believe was S tier? Not who you think is S tier now, because you've had a thousand episodes and you've seen, you know, or chapters or whatever, you've seen these characters do a lot more stuff, you know? I'm expecting people that, like, Shanks is a prime example of I'm someone I'm guessing has, like, a huge fan base because he's a major character, but I'm not at the Grand Line yet. I've seen him... In the first episode, I seen him a brief time during Luffy's bounty reveal and a brief little cameo in one of the fillers. It's not enough for me yet. I need more. I need more if he's going to make S tier. I know the argument can be made that Belmere has had just as much screen time as Shanks, but Belmere's story is complete. I've seen Belmere's story. Belmere's had a beginning and end to her story. I saw how she kind of, like, her resolution and she has now passed away and I'm not there's nothing to progress with Belmia. Uh, you know I've seen everything I have to see for her whereas Shanks there's so much I don't know about Shanks he's so mysterious what you know like what's his relationship with Mihawk for example that episode where they were sitting chatting and drinking Mihawk's under the government you know what is the situation there so yeah guys you know that's probably going to be a controversial one but, like I said, do that for me. Go into the comments. Leave me your S tiers. Your S tiers at this point. Some of you at this point probably thought Shanks, yeah, S tier for Shanks. If that's the case, tell me. But at this moment, and I will explore it again later, don't worry. At this moment, he's an A tier. Right. Oh, God, this guy. Uh, D. Yep, hated him. And I know I was supposed to hate him, but in terms of kind of like the character as well, just, you know, yeah. Well, didn't like him. Uh, he's not garbage because he is, he served a purpose and, you know, being Arlong's tool. Uh, Django. Do you know what? I actually like Django. Uh, not, well, not an A tier, sorry. I'm going to put Django in B tier. Um, I think he, you know, he was funny. He, Django made me laugh a lot. Uh, obviously, he's based on Michael Jackson, which is ridiculous. But Django made me laugh. And, uh, 
you know, more than most people on this list. So I'm going to put Django in B tier. Right, again, now, guys, calm down, right? Again, the exact same reasoning as Shanks. I'm going to put Mihawk in A tier. The way I feel right now, we've seen him in one, maybe two episodes, or no, two episodes because they came back with the, the bounty to show Shanks. That moment with Sorrow, S tier. You know, that moment that is, you know, is what the things he said in that episode, I was like, oh my God, who is this character? He was an instant and an A tier straight away. But to move up to S tier, I need to see more. I need to know more about him. You know, I know he's one of the seven warlords of the sea, but I need more. I need more of his personality. I need more of his background. Give me some of that. S tier is, you know, that's for the four characters that are there just now. In my opinion, have earned that. They've earned to be there. Mihawk and Shanks, probably, they're probably going to be there, but unless like a drastic, you know, something drastic happens in the future. Uh, but yeah, I need more from him. I think he is an amazing character and probably one of my favourite, you know, ones that kind of showed up and I was like, whoa, what is happening here? And just the, he gave us a kind of, sense of how big the world was when he came and just decimated Zorro and I was like oh okay right okay so this is the level you know this is the grand line that we need to you know, we need to go there so yeah uh Hachi I'm going to put into B tier Hachi probably the same as Kirobe um I'll probably, I'd probably prefer Kirobe more but Hachi's the funny one he made me laugh a lot you know uh during that arc and his interaction with Zoro was really funny. So, yeah, Hachi B. Arlong, right. Uh, Arlong, I'm going to put an A tier. Arlong is the best villain in One Piece we've seen so far. Um, the arc, absolutely S tier. I do not believe he is an S tier villain. I do not believe there has been any villains in One Piece so far that I would class as S tier. And I'm looking forward to seeing the first villain that I'm going to put there. Uh, I'm sure you guys probably have some idea, knowing the upcoming uh, arcs I'm coming to, who you think might be my first S-tier villain. Uh, I would say, you know, put it in the comments, but, you know, maybe don't, because if it's going to be a spoiler, don't put it in the comments. Um, but, yeah, I think that Arlong, I, I just needed more from his personality, you know, because it just it came down to basically racism. That was just kind of, you know, the driving factor for him. And, I, I, you know, it's a very strong thing to use as a motivator. And I think that I hated him so much because of the backstory. You know, I just, what happened with Belmere. And the, the arc, Alan Park, like I said before, the arc is definitely an S-tier arc. And he plays a part in that. But he doesn't quite break into that S-tier villain for me. Uh, I think that... I'm, I'm looking forward to when I finally meet that One Piece villain that makes me go, right, okay, this is an S-tier villain. You know, the personalities there, the motivations there, uh, the design, you know, the uh, the arc, you know, the arc that they're based around. So that's where I stand right now with him. Uh, Chu, I'm going to put Chu in C. Uh, you know, I like to fight with Usopp. You know, it made me laugh a bit too, but yeah, I don't think he's as good as Kirobe and... Hachi, uh, Richie, the lion. Uh, you can go with your master in D tier. Um, oh, God, I didn't write her name down, uh, but I know who this is. This is the little girl um, that gave Zoro the onigiri. Uh, yeah, I actually quite, I quite like her, actually. She was cute, and she, uh, you know, she was brave. She went in there when Zoro was in the... Uh, military base tied up, you know, to try and feed them. Um, uh, where will I put you? Where will I put you? You know, I'll, I'll put her in C. I'll put her in C. Um, I don't think she quite warrants uh, B tier, but you know, she was fun. She was she was only in it for a couple of episodes, but she was she was a good little character. I liked her. Um, right. Oh, God, right, let's rattle through a couple of these are filler characters. Let's, let's rattle through these here. Right, this guy uh, that I'm in the filler with right now, 
Eric, his name is, he is garbage. Um, the only thing that I love about him is that he has Freezer's voice uh, from Dragon Ball. And, but I'm so angry that such an iconic voice is being used for this character. Because I hate this character. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to say about him. I'm still, I'm not finished the filler yet, but yeah, that's where he belongs. Um, oh, oh, the uh, merchant that sold the swords to Zoro. She was a great woman. Uh, I'll put him in C tier. He, he's in C tier. I, I like the fact that he kind of, you know, recognised Zoro for, for being a true swordsman and gave him uh, the best sword they had. So, yeah, put him there. Right. Now, uh, just want, uh, right. what, what, I get mixed up with these two. I wrote it down. One of them's Lucky Roo. I think he's Lucky Roo. And the other one is Ben Beckman. Um I like the scene where he shoots the guy. I'm actually going to... You know what? I think he's actually a quite a cool... I'm going to put him in... B? I don't, I've not seen much of him, though. No, you know what? I, I'll put him in B tier. Just from that one scene. That scene where he shoots that guy who's holding the gun to Shanks' his head and then takes a bite of his food as if it's just, like, nah, nonchalant. I actually really like that. And... Uh, he has that, I love the fact, we don't speak enough as well about the fact that the crew has a connection with Luffy as well. He has a connection with Luffy, Ben Beckman, you know, Yasop, they all love Luffy. And they were all excited to see the Wanted poster when Mihawk showed up with it. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll put him in B. I'll put Ben Beckman there too when we get to him. Uh, the lady from the filler with the cook-off with Sanji, she was okay, you know, she put her in D. Um... Yeah, same with this dad to the father uh, guy in D tier. Don't really have much to say about him. You know, it was like a one-off episode for them. It was good. There were more there to kind of drive, like, a, give a bit of Usopp development, give a bit of Sandy development, and they did that. Right. Yasop. Now, I'm not going to be harsh, right? I'm not going to put him in garbage. I'll put him in D tier. Just now, because he has a he's a bad dad, right? He's a very bad father. Um, you know, he's part of Shanks' crew. He's probably going to be cool. We're a cool character. You know, he had the show with Dad the Father. That was a good little character for him there. But at the same time, he comes out with a statement that you know he loves his son, but he loves being a pirate more. Okay, you could pop in and visit. You know, uh, I like the he, he likes Luffy. But that's really more to it than that. I, I think I need to I need more context on Yasop before I can move him up. You know, I could be sitting here and I'll change my mind later on in the series and like more information will be brought to my attention. M my big question for this character is does he know that Usopp's mum is dead? That's that'll be a that'll be a big thing for me, is if he knows that. If he if he does know that and he's never went and pay the visit to Usopp, then he's going down, he's going into the garbage tier, definitely. Um, Alvida, you know what, I'm going to put Alvida in to B tier, uh, because of, <laughs> you know, I just, uh, that was a total shocker for me, I, I wish I'd noticed uh, the club that she was carrying, <laughs> to work out, it was her after she ate her devil fruit, the fact that I thought that this was like a relative of Luffy's, you know, I thought, oh, it's his big sister or something, try to track him down. <laughs> Turns out to be Alvida from the first episode. So, yeah. I like that she's with Buggy now, too. Um, you know, so we'll probably see her again because she's with Buggy and they're coming to the Grand Line. Uh, ben Begman, I'll put him in B, uh, along with uh, Lucky Root. I, you know, I like him. I like the fact that he was the one, wasn't he, that when Shanks gave the order, he just kind of wiped out the bandits. Um, with like the, he didn't even he, he turned his gun around didn't he and just kind of just decimated them so I think he's going to be a strong character um, but like I said like B is the highest I can give him at this point because I don't know anything else about him uh, oh dad the father's little, little, little girl there yeah she put her in D she, was, she wasn't up to much uh, Tashigi um, I'll put Tashigi in B tier I like Tashigi uh, but She's not quite eight here, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing her more. We're going to see more of her because she's coming with Smoker to the Grand Line. So we will see her again and hopefully we'll get some, you know, more 
moments between her and Zoro because I loved that. Um, uh, what's this one? Makino from the bar and Luffy's village. Um, I'll put her in C tier. She seems like a nice lady. She seems like she really like loves Luffy and you know wants what's best for him. Uh, I liked when she saw gets to see that he's uh, out living his dream with the wanted poster and stuff. So yeah. C tier, there's not much else to her that I can really justify putting her any higher. Um, Apis, um, I quite like Apis actually. Um, I think she's uh, a fun little character. I like uh, how she interacts with all the crew and with all them being crazy and there's just this little girl trying to uh, live on this ship full of these like, nutcases. So yeah, I'll put her in C tier. She's okay. Um, this guy's garbage. Uh, yeah, absolutely garbage. Um... I'm not going to jump into it. Just a, a crap character. He's in the filler that I'm watching just now. And he's rubbish. Um, the dragon. Uh, yeah, I'll put it in D. I don't have much to say about this, really. Uh, you know, you don't get much interaction there. I've not finished it yet, so my opinion on that might change. But as of now, I don't think it just finds the garbage, but put it there. Right, okay. Oh, these last three. What do I do here? Right, Gold Roger. Oh, God. Does Gold Roger get an A tier? Uh, or B tier? He's not S tier. You know, I, 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 he's probably the character. Um, Well, actually, him and Dragon, who's also at the end here. The two characters I want to know the most about. I, I need to know more about these characters. Um, these are the two that I, I want to know more just to kind of give, because I can't I can't justify putting them. Like, he, he, I know that he is the driving force of the One Piece. He is the reason that we have this story. It's And we're going to find out more about him, you know? And that, so I think he has such, a, such room to kind of move up this list when I find out more about who he was and what the One Piece is and all that kind of thing. But just the scenes of him on the execution platform and smiling and giving the speech, God, it, it, it hits you, you know. So, uh, Gold Roger, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put him in B just now because I need to, I need more guys, I need more of Gold Roger, and I know, I know. <laughs> Once again, don't. Judge it based on where you guys are, because I'm sure that you guys know so much more about Gold Roger now than I do. But at this point just now, all I know is that he's a badass, you know, that, you know, smiled at his death, gave the speech, kicked off all this stuff with uh, the pirate era and about the One Piece. But I don't think he's he's quite in the A tier. The people that are all in A tier are all people that I believe have had screen time and some moments that made me go, right, okay, these these are kind of, like, I love these characters, you know, I, I like, in terms of, I mean, well, our long's hard to explain there, but I mean, like, they're just, I believe that they are top tier characters. I believe that they are the cream of the crop of this show. B tier are great characters. I still like these characters, but A tier is just different level different level in terms of writing, in terms of uh, just character in general. And Smoker is going uh, right up there into A tier. I really like Smoker. Um, the, by far the best Marine that we have seen so far, um, if you don't count Belmere. <laughs> but um, yeah, he is a, a good Marine, you know, out of a clearly corrupt system and he his power is so OP guys I do not know how we're going to beat this guy this, that smoke power is insane um where do we go from there with that you know how do we beat this guy and I, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him because like I said he's coming after us in the grand line and I can't wait to see uh, what happens there how, he, how he's going to how Luffy's going to get out of that, because if that guy's just run away, next time we see him, just run. Um, and Dragon. Now, I've just finished Logtown, so I've only had a brief moment with Dragon. You've probably seen from the last video, uh, he kind of showed up and saved us in Logtown, but 
Uh, I'll, you know what? I'll put him with Gold Roger. That's perfect, actually, because he's so mysterious. I can tell he's going to be, like, probably a, a really important character uh, because of the way that Smoker was treating him and talking to him. But at this moment, I don't know much about him. You know, I know the government's after him. The government are wanting him. But other than that, I don't know anything else. I like the tattoo. <laughs> Oh, the design looks awesome. Like I, I've, I've only seen like obviously his face because he was a cloak, but his design looks awesome. And yeah, that that's all I can really say about him because until I know more, I can't go forward with that. So yeah, that's where we stand, guys. Uh, I'm happy with that. You know, let's just cut out the garbage and look at this here. There we go. That's the last. Now what I'll do is. Like C tier and D tier, that's fine. Like I'm happy with those. Like they can, they're just kind of all bigger. They can mix themselves around about. But what I'll do is I'll rank these ones here in terms of my personal preference of favourites. So top of B tier is, in fact, you know what? I'm going to leave B tier because a lot of them are kind of similar. Yosaku and Johnny have probably put up there. Uh, again, I'll put up there. These what like these ones here, um, are all people that I need to find out more about, you know, uh, yeah, but I'm happy with that. Probably move those sort of pirates down a bit. Oh no, not down there, just there. But yeah, I like that, um, because I don't really know much about the ones that are. Can I hear? I'll put Gold, in fact, do you know what I'm sorry? I'll put Gold Roger and Dragon up at the top of B tier in terms of the potential, in terms of what I think, because I think they're definitely going to probably move up, um, whereas the rest of these characters will probably stay where they are. Uh, well, maybe not. Uh, maybe if we see Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo in the future and we get more context on them, they might move up, but Dragon and uh, Gold Roger probably definitely going to move up uh right a tier top of a tier i'm happy putting sanji there uh Gein's probably at the bottom as much as i love him he's probably at the bottom smoker along yep i'm happy with that uh zef probably shanks above zef probably mihawk above zef i still i really like zef i'll probably keep zef above along um, do I prefer Russell to Sanji? I think at this point I probably do. No, uh, I don't know. Like, the Usopp and Sanji are really close for me. Um, I really like both of them, I believe they are the top of A tier, but I those two switch around for me, and it's the same up here, right? I'll put Nami above Belmia. Um, because I think that Nami is just, like, it's, it's her story. That is her story, Arlong Park. So she deserves to be uh, third place there. But in terms of these two, at the moment, Luffy. Luffy's my favourite character at the moment. I'm putting him at the top. Uh, Zoro just behind him. Um, but that'll probably change again next episode because it does with these two. And I think that that right there, I'm happy with that. Guys, that is the list. That is a definitive uh, list of East Blue characters so far. How I feel about them. Uh, these, it's, it's such a great cast. And the thing about this is, these are all kind of like mainly side characters. And it just shows you how well written this show is in terms of their characters. That, like, look at all of these kind of crazy designs and, like insane characters that you wouldn't expect to, you know, be in such high esteem um, and have such great moments. But they're all kind of, you know, the only ones that are kind of down low in D tier are the ones that I either, I've had like one episode with them and had a brief interaction. So I don't really, like, I can't, I can't warrant putting them any higher or they're just annoying, a bit annoying. Or like in terms of Yasop with the dad thing. <laughs> Uh, but other than that, yeah, guys, there's not there's not many bad characters. In fact, I think that only 
the garbage one. The only garbage one that's from actual canon that I've put in there is Peril. <laughs> and I'm probably going to get some jokes about that. If, pe if people like Peril, let me know you like Peril. Because I just, I don't know what it is about that character. I just don't like him. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's it. Uh, we'll be back on the channel watching episode 61 soon. Um, this is the finished list. Uh, like I said before, you guys do me a favour. Go into the comments. Give me your S tiers, but I want your S tiers from when you were at this point. From when you just finished East Blue, who were your S tiers? And if you can, put them in order of, like like I've done at the top with these, I've put them from Luffy down to Belmia. Give me your rank of your S tiers at the point I was at in the story, uh, if you can, if you're able to do that. Uh, and please be careful for me with the spoilers, uh, if you can. I know it'll probably be a minefield, but I don't, like, don't go into the comments and say, oh, you know, uh, so-and-so should be S tier because, you know, 200 episodes from now, this happens. Please don't do that, you know, understand where I am, and, you know, uh, if you want to get in the comments and can you give me a Oh, just, like, I don't mind that. Go in the comments and say, oh, just you wait. You know, you, your mind will change on this character. I'm happy with that, you know, because that will just get me excited for what's to come. So, guys, thanks very much. This is a long video. Thanks for sticking with me if you have. And I will see you in episode 61. Cheers, guys.